Have you noticed? Whenever you see a commercial for ham on TV, it's often set in the countryside, with a nice family and a rustic backdrop. And the ham is always pink. Very pink. And 100% natural, of course. Ne passons pas à côté des choses simples. It looks so tasty, it has your mouth watering on the couch. Well, that's the point. But what if, behind this pretty pink, hid one of the biggest health scandals of our era? In 2015, the World Health Organization listed processed meats as carcinogenic for man. We decided to investigate the ingredients used by the giants of the food industry. It can induce DNA breaks, um, mutate cells into sort of pre-cancer cells. We discovered that to impede or halt regulations on certain additives, food industry lobbies have been working in the shadows for decades. You have to understand that the industry is a money-making business, so they're very risk-averse. They're not going to fund a study that is bad for their business. It resembles pas mal à ce que faisaient les industriels du tabac, c'est-à-dire qu'ils payent des scientifiques pour dire le contraire de ce qui est vrai. At the heart of this strategy of influence are the scientists who collaborate. Did the meat industry pay you for this? I received some compensation for my time as well as the others. How much? I am not going to say. And the scientists who are targeted. Basically, we're trying to shoot me down or discredit me. I mean, that's what shoot down means, scientifically. These efforts to go after the scientists and to discredit the scientists is a key element of a much larger strategy to just gum up the entire policy-making process. Between intimidation, lies, and manipulation, we will uncover proof of a worldwide strategy where hitting below the belt is allowed. Leave now! Get the fuck out of here! Feeling hungry now? Then it's time to eat. Tonight, you are our guests. To find out how ham is made, we visited a factory. Welcome to Fleury Michon, one of the market leaders in France, and one of the few to play the card of transparency. The ham on your supermarket shelves starts out like this. Big lumps of pork meat. To add taste, a little vegetable stock. It all goes into a ham-shaped mold, and it's cooked. And the result? Perfectly pink, rounded slices. Have you grasped the basics? Well, let's rewind a little to see the detail that changes everything. To obtain this fine ham, there's another very important step. You have to inject the meat. A machine with a dozen syringes injects a liquid into the lumps of pork meat. The liquid contains an essential additive. Factory manager Laurent Rouleau shows us. These yellow sacs contain a mixture of salt and sodium nitrite, the additive E250. The sel nitrité sert à assurer la conservation du jambon, à lutter contre des germes pathogènes, et aussi de donner la couleur et le goût caractéristique de la charcuterie. Il va agir en donnant une coloration rosée, en fait, à la charcuterie. In fact, he's telling us that the pretty pink of our ham isn't natural at all. It's thanks to sodium nitrite. This additive fixes the pink of the meat during cooking. Otherwise, ham would be the color of roast pork. That's why food industrialists can't do without it, as a processed meats producer would confirm. 
le nitrite, c'est vraiment ça. C'est vraiment pour, pour la, la couleur, parce que ben, je vous dis, le jambon doit être rose, la crème doit être rose, elle doit pas être brune, euh, parce que sinon on va me dire qu'elle n'est pas fraîche, ou est, etc. Donc euh, en clair, je cuis une viande, ça donne un jambon gris. Mm -hmm. euh, c'est ce qu'il faudrait faire. Mm -hmm. C'est ce qu'il faudrait faire. Euh, c'est quelque vous chose. Pourquoi ne pas du jambon gris Oui, parce que personne ne va l'acheter. Tout simplement, personne ne va l'acheter. Et le marché ou, ou, ou le consommateur n'est pas prêt à ça. Donc pour vous, aujourd'hui, c'est vraiment un problème de couleur, en fait Ah ben clairement, oui. Clairement, parce que sinon, on peut saler la viande avec du sel de viande sans problème. Mm. Let's sum up. The ham's pink is unnatural, but without the pink, it would be impossible to sell. The big problem is that sodium nitrite is believed to be a danger to public health. The additive is suspected of playing a role in the development of colorectal cancer, one of the deadliest cancers in Europe. The cause? A phenomenon that takes place during digestion. It's chemistry, but we'll make it simple. You swallow a piece of cured meat. You think you're peacefully digesting it. But what you don't know is, the nitrite molecules are reacting with the meat proteins, transforming them into very dangerous substances. Nitrosamines. We went to the Netherlands to learn more about the effects of this chemical reaction on our health. To the Faculty of Medicine of Maastricht University. This is where the toxicologist Professor Theo de Koch works. He's been interested in nitrites for years, and by extension, nitrosamines. Nitrosamines are known to induce damage in the large intestine, so it can induce DNA breaks, uh, mutate cells into sort of pre-cancer cells, and that's of course something that you want to, uh, want to prevent. Professor de Cook notably wanted to find out what happens inside the body when we don't eat processed meat and when we eat a lot of it. To do so, he conducted an experiment with human guinea pigs, like I'll know. For two weeks, this student ate 300 grams of processed meat a day, the equivalent of eight and a half sausages or seven slices of ham. After 15 days, we saw that uh, the exposure to nitrosamines was considerably increased. So it was up to uh, between two and three fold increase as compared to the levels that we measured at start. The researcher measured the impact on the organism of this chemical mutation of nitrites into nitrosamines. In his lab, he tested the fecal water of big processed meat eaters like Arnaud. So what you see here is uh, fecal water from four different individuals. To see what happens inside the body, the researchers mixed this fecal water with human cells. The white deposit in the test tube. Then they observed what happened to the cells. You see that if you have no exposure, you see that everything is intact, so the material stays together, but if you are exposed to nitrosamines that induce breakages of uh, the DNA, you see this comet tail appearing. So you see that here the damage is quite extensive. So the more damage you have, the more likely it is that a cell like this will eventually mutate into a pre-cancer type of cell. How long does it take for such a damage? Well, this damage can be induced relatively quickly. So in this assay, when we isolate the cells and we only expose them for half an hour, and then you already see the breakage of these DNA strands. So that's how fast it can happen. And that can also happen not just in the lab here, but also in an intact human body. And if we stopped using nitrites, then what? That would make a difference of potentially several thousands of colorectal cancer that's in Europe every year. That's huge? That's huge because uh, colorectal cancer is a very frequent disease, uh, already small changes in uh, a cancer risk can have a big impact uh, 
in, in a large population. Thousands fewer cancers, and therefore potentially fewer deaths, just by suppressing nitrites. But the food industry has a sledgehammer argument for justifying the use of nitrites. It protects us from botulism. Botulism is a form of food poisoning caused by bacteria that affect our central nervous system and can be deadly. Scary, right? But there's a glitch in their argument. There are already companies which do produce processed meats without nitrites, and their customers are in fine form. If you happen to be in Copenhagen in Denmark, just after the Little Mermaid and the Quayside Promenade, pop into a supermarket, like we did. There you'll find cured meats without nitrites. And for those whose Danish has gone a bit rusty, it's uden nitrit. It's everywhere. You can easily recognize it by its color, more brownish than pretty pink. And the best known brand is produced 150 kilometers south of the capital in Denmark's biggest organic processed meat plant, Hannegal. The boss, a biochemist, started in nitrite free cured meats 25 years ago. Since then, the Danish health authorities haven't registered a single case of botulism caused by processed meat. We do not have problems with this bacteria. I would say for the last 50 years, this has not been a reasonable uh, uh, topic in Western Europe. That was a problem in meat industry 100 years ago, where things were not as clean as they are, slaughterhouses were not as clean as they are today. So no worry about bacteria. Now we have to worry about additives that might be cancer producing. And if they are not necessary for some very good reasons, we should not use them. For you, the cancer risk today is the main risk? That's that the main risk today, definitely. And, and actually, it has been so for uh, 30, 40 years. Why do producers still put nitrate in meat? The main reason is that they are afraid that customers will not accept products which do not have the red color that they have been used to for many, many years. Hanegal is one of the few food industry companies to do without nitrites. And yet, experts have been ringing alarm bells for years. 25 years ago, a European Union health report already recommended reducing the amounts of nitrite used in processed meats. In 1999, this report even put forward banning its use altogether. Despite the increasing number of studies, the European Commission still allows industrial food companies to add lots of nitrites to the products. 